Purdue has a new head coach, Ryan Walters, the talented and successful defensive coordinator from Illinois. The previous head coach, Jeff Brom, has returned to Louisville to coach his alma mater. Brom was Purdue's most successful coach in the post-Joe Tiller era. Ryan Walters has never been a head coach and is one of the youngest coaches in the league, which means he doesn't have a lot of experience either. He is a true freshman in the coaching freshman class. After Jeff Brom, Purdue needed experience, and they went with a rookie. So we have to ask, Purdue, what do you want from your team, and can Ryan Walters deliver? This is going to take a little extra time to unpack. What is Purdue? In order to find out what Purdue wants from their football team, we have to look at where they are and where they've been. In the Big Ten, Purdue is ninth place for total wins, 352 games behind first place Michigan. Ninth place for bowl wins, 20 games behind first place Penn State. Fifth place for conference titles, 30 games behind first place Michigan. But never count Purdue out, because at Purdue, they do things the old fashioned way. They earn it. They earned their nickname on October 24, 1891. After beating Wabash College 44 to nothing, a reporter for the Crawfordsville newspaper referred to the Purdue team as Brutes and Boilermakers. In recent years, the Boilermakers have earned a new nickname, the Spoilermakers, because they hold the record for wins against top five teams while unranked. Coaches. Five Purdue coaches are in the College Football Hall of Fame and nine have won conference titles. But what makes them interesting are their nicknames and the rumors. Knowlton Snake Ames coached Purdue and Northwestern at the same time in 1891 and 1892. He was undefeated at Purdue during his entire two-season tenure. It was 12 games, but go 12-0 today in your championship material. Snake's Boilermakers won the conference championship both seasons. David Pete Ballet coached the team from 1893 to 1895. He brought home another two conference titles. His nickname is boring, but it's rumored Ballet left coaching and his law practice to join in the Klondike Gold Rush of 1897. He obviously came back because he was rehired as head coach of Purdue in 1901. Kenneth Jack Mullenkopf coached at Purdue from 1956 to 69 with a record of 84, 39, and 9. His tenure is considered the golden years of Purdue football. He's the second most winning coach in Purdue history, right behind Joe Tiller, but has fewer losses and a higher win percentage than Tiller. Speaking of Joe Tiller, he's the winningest coach in Purdue history, with a record of 87 and 62. 10 and 2 against Indiana, 10 bowl games, a Big Ten championship, and an upset over Notre Dame. His coaching style was affectionately called basketball on grass. And no, that's not a euphemism. Players. Purdue is the cradle of quarterbacks, having sent 15 quarterbacks to the NFL and amassing more touchdown passes than any other school. Three of those quarterbacks have won Super Bowls. Len Dawson led the Kansas City Chiefs to victory in Super Bowl IV. Bob Greasy led the Miami Dolphins to victory in Super Bowl VII. Drew Brees led the New Orleans Saints to victory in Super Bowl XLIV. In fact, Purdue holds the record for the most Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. They're actually tied for the record, but the other team is Alabama. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Students and fans. The students and fans of Purdue are all in, and here's the proof. Purdue's official mascot is a Victorian era style locomotive, which was a surprise to me because I thought Purdue Pete was the mascot. Purdue has the world's largest drum. Maybe. Others claim to have the largest drum, and they'll prove it to you through archaic means of quote-unquote scientific measurements. But the fans know Purdue has the largest bass drum in the world. Sorry, Texas. That rallying cry, boiler up, with the blast of the train horn, it's unique, classic, and they can't get enough of it. Jeff Brom. With all that history and legendary culture, Purdue football has struggled for a couple decades. In the post-Joe Tiller era, that's 2009 to 2016, Purdue's overall record was 31-67, putting them at the bottom of the Big Ten. 
The last time Purdue even had a piece of the Big Ten title was in 2000, and they've never won a national title, although there is an ongoing argument about the 1931 season, but we'll leave that to another video. Jeff Brom was brought in to turn the team around, and he was, by most accounts, successful. In 2021, Purdue had their first nine-win season since 2003, three bowls in five seasons, winning two of them, epic upsets against number two Ohio, number two Iowa, and number three Michigan State, all while Purdue was unranked. First AP poll ranking since 2007, three and one versus Indiana in the old Oak and Bucket series, four and one versus Illinois in the Cannon series. Their first, first round NFL draft pick since 2011 in George Karlaftis. Three NFL picks in 2022's NFL draft, first time since 2008. Eight NFL picks in the last five drafts. Brom is the fifth winningest coach in Purdue history, but the first since Joe Tiller to have a winning record. In his last season, Purdue won the West Division and earned a spot in the Big Ten Championship game. The 2022 Big Ten Championship Game 2022 was a spectacular mess for the Big Ten West, but Purdue rose to the top and found themselves for the first time at Lucas Oil Stadium playing for the Big Ten Championship. Unfortunately, the 8-4 Boilermakers went head-to-head -head with the 12-0 Michigan Wolverines. Nevertheless, Purdue came to play. At the end of the first quarter, the score was even at seven apiece. At the half, the Boilermakers were proving their mettle keeping the score close at 13 to 14. In the second half, the engine ran out of steam as the Boilermakers only scored nine points against the Wolverines' 29 points. The Boilermakers finished the season eight and six, beat two ranked teams while unranked, beat in-state rivals Indiana and Indiana State, and even earned a spot in the Citrus Bowl. Year over year, they were improving. But then, on December 7th, 2022, Jeff Brom, the coach who made it all happen resigned from Purdue to coach his alma mater, the Louisville Cardinals. Brom has family there, the team is happy for him, so be it. But once again, Purdue is starting over, and this time with a rookie coach. The future. The Big Ten is looming larger, stronger, and more elite. The pressure is probably higher than it's ever been for a Purdue head coach. Mike Babinski, the Purdue Athletic Director, laid out these criteria for a new hire. A leader of integrity, has a strong academic orientation, intelligence, a history of success and growth, and then finally a belief in our opportunity at Purdue. None of that is earth shattering. It's what you'd expect, but how does this translate to wins on the field? What is Ryan Walters' track record? Ryan Walters. From 2009 to 2014, Ryan Walters gained a lot of experience from multiple programs. In 2010, at 24 years old, he was the youngest Power 5 assistant coach in the country. 2011, he was promoted to defensive back coach at Arizona. 2012, he was an assistant coach at Oklahoma, and that year they went to the Cotton Bowl. 2013, he moved to North Texas to be the cornerback coach, and they won the Heart of Dallas Bowl that year. 2014, Cornerback coach for the Memphis Tigers, they won the Miami Beach Bowl. Walters finally landed a long-term position at Missouri from 2015 to 2020. He started as the safeties coach, but in his second year moved up to co-defensive coordinator. In 2018, he became the sole defensive coordinator. These were tough years at Missouri, but learning years for Ryan. In 2021, Brett Belima was in his first season as head coach of Illinois, and he brought on Walters as defensive coordinator. It was a rebuilding year for the Illini, and they finished 5-7. In 2022, Illinois fought back, and for a time it looked like they would win the West Division. But, ironically, they lost to Purdue, and that gave the Boilermakers the edge they needed to clinch the West. Meanwhile, Illinois finished the season 8-5. It's their first season with eight or more wins since 2007. But that's not the only achievement. Ryan Walters' 2022 Illinois defensive line was Number two in the nation for points allowed. Number three in the nation for total defense. Number three in the nation for yards per play. Number one in the nation for interceptions. Number one in the nation for takeaways. Ryan Walters is, without a doubt, a coach who knows defense, but Purdue has largely depended on their offense. How does Ryan Walters elevate the defense without diminishing the offense? Ryan Walters and Purdue. Let's put the pieces on the board. Walters brought with him Kevin Kane from Illinois. 
Kane was the assistant head coach and outside linebackers coach at Illinois for the 20 and 21 seasons. In 2022, he assisted Walters in building that outstanding Illinois defense. Graham Harrell is an experienced defensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach from North Texas, USC, and West Virginia. At West Virginia, his offense averaged 30.6 points per game. At USC, he kept the offense in the top 20 nationally all three years. The teams didn't perform as well overall, but maybe Harold just needs the right head coach. From what I can tell, Walters is bringing in the right people. He's treating his players well and getting the support he needs from the athletic director. His biggest challenge is time. USC is coming to the Big Ten. Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State are ranking in the top 10 consistently. College football is no longer a regional sport, which makes recruiting that much tougher. When you're an untested coach, convincing players to come to a school with an average record is an enormous challenge. Prediction. Making a prediction on a brand new first time rookie head coach is difficult because they all say the same things and promise the same things and they don't have the record to prove it right, wrong, or otherwise. The key is what Walter said at his introductory press conference. Yeah, first off, um, everybody in the building is, is first and foremost going to be a high character guys. No egos. Uh, nobody can care who gets the credit. I think he's right. Purdue is not a program where big egos survive. If he sticks to that promise and wins, he's at Purdue for as long as he wants. If he doesn't, win or lose, I think the Boilermaker hammer is coming down. Thanks for watching and let me know in the comments if you think Ryan Walters is right for Purdue. Can he improve on Jeff Brom? Can he make Purdue competitive with elite programs? Let me know your thoughts. While you're commenting, don't forget to like and subscribe. That always helps us out. And don't forget to do that for all your favorite YouTubers. Help us get to 500 subs. We are so close and we just need a few more. This is Team Rivalry. Help us get to 500 subs, please. Tell your friends, family, your dog, your neighbor's dog. Is David Ballet the inspiration for Purdue Pete? Kind of looks like it.